This show is part of the Head Stuff Podcast Network. Hello. Do you like Rio Lago? Oh, yeah, I do. It tastes really, really nice. Oh, I love it. It's real authentic Irish lager. Do you know, I've been over to Ireland because I think this is where my family come from there. Wicklow, where this re-roll lager comes from, it's light and fresh and delicious. And they like comedy too, because they sponsor the Young Hot Guys podcast. Yeah, they call it lager there, and they call it Chicago. Weird. Let's <laughs> re-roll beer. Delicious. There, the track. Loud. And a little bit sad. He was the best guy around. Oh my, oh my. Is it hot in here or what? You're an attractive guy. It's the fabulous Tony Cantwell. I'm talking about Shane Daniel Burns. Idiot, so Do you know what they're talking about this week, boys? What are they they're talking, talking about? They're talking about the, uh, Ireland's favourite thing, a new scandal. It's currently the children's hospital. Oh, yeah. How much talk can you do? How much talk radio can you fill? By We, we all know the facts. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's it's gone on longer than expected with a pandemic in the middle, to be fair to mm. nobody. What we're the most about. expensive hospital in the world. The mm. Burj Khalifa costs 1.5 billion. The hospital costs more. Now, I will mm. say, right, it is very bad. But ours wasn't wasn't built yeah. on slave labor. Ours wasn't built on slave, like for for no reason. Yeah, they're building the hospital to feed We're the health of six children. The children yeah. eventually, mm. eventually, that will be twenty years down the line. No one will remember this scandal at all. Well, they I might mention it. Uh, it's a legendary scandal. Yeah, it's okay, a, it's it's, it's a legendary one. They bur- they built the Burj Khalifa for nothing. Mm. Yeah, well, Killian and I were on. We were in the Burj we Khalifa. In the Burj Khalifa. Yeah, that's right. We were there doing a. A cons- it was a consultancy job for for the doll. Uh, they get sent us on a consultancy thing to see how much. The well, I apologize for going to Dubai. I'd never go again. I'm, I regret it. Well, it's good yeah, to know that me, the, the Dubai well, people, of course, have the largest penises in the world because of the Burj Khalifa is the tallest uh, building in the world. Yes, it must be. And when we were leaving, we said Dubai bye, and we didn't, and we're not going back. We said Dubai, 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 <laughs> Dubai, 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 um, I think that talk radio uh, and Joe Duffy is our, in the way the French go out and, you know, they protest and they block the streets and mm. some of them wear their high vis. Yeah. I think talk radio is ours. I think that is our form of yeah. very lack kind of protest, you know, in the kitchen with a cup of tea, staring out the window, seeing if there's That's any the fire in the window. The famous Irish rebel spirit is sort of <laughs> well, manifested in but there's talk about, radio. There's about, it's pretty strong. <laughs> I think there's about eight topics you can talk about and give out of it, right? And I love when they mix them in in any which way. Mm. So one mm. woman was talking about the the other scandal we're dealing with at the moment is that in the government buildings they built a what you call it a bike shelter for three hundred and twenty five thousand. Yeah. Got a euros brand them. new bike shed. <laughs> no, there, there's another one on top of that. I just did a sketch about it. So this oh, is. I must check that out. Oh wow! But it's about. Is it online? What's it's your online. Instagram handle? Like? Yeah, it's check a that Killer out. Sunday. <laughs> okay, I must check that out. But it's uh, it's they've got a new one now. They've got a security hut. Oh, that cost bills. a million. Fact, yeah, yeah, yeah. 1.5 yeah. million for the security. 1.5 million. Yeah. How much does a chicken hook cost? Uh, nothing. nothing. Yeah. So she could she put them in the chicken hut. Put them in the chicken hut. Um, chicken hut. Delicious. Lovely. Uh, On yeah. Malpa Street there. But I love when they blend them together. Mm-hmm. I was listening to Live Line. Joe wasn't on. It was Colin Mamongon was on. Mm. Doesn't have this. You do doesn't have it. Yes, if you ask me, you don't have it. You don't have it. You, can, you, you can't do. We're going to be talking about Live Line. Colin Mamongon. That's a funny name, but I'm just saying that we're going to be talking about Live Line and you're going to be tempted yes. to do your Don't Joe Duffy. Don't bother. <laughs> My Duffy. How, how many... We can't Sunderman's get, famous Duffy No, we impression. can't give you any more. Okay. We've got Mary here on the line talking. Mary, That's enough. What's okay, going do you know on? what? Now you're on the list, right? <laughs> your impression of Joe Duffy is on the list with Netanyahu of being barred from this podcast, okay? And your mate... Lad, I wanted to bar someone the other day. Yeah, you want who are we going to bar? Oh, we'll keep that spin in the back of my head. Are we also bar barring that German comedian who stole my sketch. That okay, time. he's we banned. barred your one who called you a c word. Yeah, oh, we unbarred them because they, 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 they pled their case. They pled their case. They pled their case. Um, there was somebody I wanted to bar. My but, duffy is on. Um, it. It's not allowed in. Never. I really want to get this out. It's probably not that good anyway. But either way, uh, I like when they mix in the other talk topics. So they're talking about the bike shelter, and then they go. Well, Colm, my sister, her son, she had to pay eight grand for an assessment. And it was like, this yes. is not this is not about autism yes. at the moment. We're actually talking about, and this, as if these are interwoven, mm, it's or, like it's all one, you know, in mm. one sense, it's all public money. And yes, mm. yes, yes, I get that. But like, 
How many How many assessments Not that many actually yeah, yeah. Not that many For the price of the thing They couldn't have done that many To be honest The assessments appear to be very expensive mm. uh, Evelyn or whoever's ringing up um, But I just love When they blend them in together mm. And they're like And Sonia Sullivan Like I just yeah. love Any old thing They'll throw that yeah, in Yeah 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 And it's like I hope all the children Get the thing I hope that The Children get their spinal surgery. I, all the things. I want all the things, mm-hmm. but I, I, it's impossible sometimes yeah, to just, talk about yeah, everything did, at the we, same time. We've always, the three of us have always been very held strong in our belief that we want all the children to get their spinal Any surgery. Any children who have scoliosis yes. deserve their surgery, and I want that yeah. soon. We've and I want Finn and Gale out of that. government. Mm-hmm. And Simon Harris put him on the banned list as well for his lies and dog whistling he was spreading around. And our, one of our top, top politicians, Holly Kearns. This is like mm. political today. Mm. This is very, actually, this is news talk today. Yeah. You know what else is political? Oh, he has something else. Move oh. on your book again. I make cookies for everyone. Killian has presented tinfoil. Wow. ASMR the tinfoil. The master of the segue, Killian Sunderman. <laughs> the way he weaves the links together. I don't know how he does it. I don't it's know like how magic. he does it. <laughs> I just thought, I must why not lie. make some cookies for everyone? But we don't eat on the podcast. Killian. Yeah, but I'm just saying I'm presenting them to you on the podcast and Hillary is back there. There's one for you, Hillary. Okay, bloody hell. Like, they look like... Um, you can have the broken one. He's like touching butts. them a lot. So... Just say thank you. you that's what people actually say usually. So, oh, thank you. Killy, oh, that's so God. nice. Wear me manners over the wall picking up shite. How nice to get a sweet for people. Yeah. That's, thank so you so you much. Well, oh, I'll put them away and we won't actually eat them. These there aren't like wacky ones. Like I'm not going to be all like, you know, seeing all goblins and all of me. I put a little something in there for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. A little surprise. Chocolate chips. <laughs> yeah. It's not something, vegan or something. something else. Yeah, they'll no, have to be vegan. Something else. Something else. Um, do you know what happened to me? This, can I tell you something this morning that was absolutely insane? I felt. I was sitting, I went to Hot Boy Coffee. Young oh, Hot Coffee. Oh, yeah, yeah, Young Hot, Hot Boys. Coffee. Went mm-hmm. to the Hot Boys, got coffee. It's actually delicious. I'm sorry, but it's delicious. I got Don't yesterday, apologize. I got Garage Coffee. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I love them all. All the coffees, any coffee will do. But then I got Garage Coffee yesterday. Was it Brayburn? It was one of them. And you know, I should tell you, I tell you Apple Green, I'm going to call it Apple Green there on the road. Brayburn, Black Rock they there. have. Whatever it is, apple green. Well, no, the apple green have and a brand And they only had Braver. big cups. Okay. And I pressed Americano, regular size, 310 it was, which is, Mary-cano. of course, a curse. <laughs> you got Mary Cano. I pressed Mary Cano. <laughs> mm-hmm. I said, Mary Cano. Well, she was, Cano's our married name, but anyway. Um, she but was, she... She was Mary <laughs> Phillips when I met her. <laughs> yeah, she's Protestant. But anyway... Brief. And then I went up to the till and caught the large cups. Your one says it's 380. I said, it's 310. It is three hundred six three eight the large mm. one. I was like, you only have large cups, and then I had to open the lid and show the girl. I said, "Look, I'm not trying to hoodwink anybody," yeah. Yeah. and also th- that's charging you seventy cent extra for additional yeah. water. Yeah. Oh fuck now yourself. We were, anyway, now, I'll now get we, on to We were talking about we <laughs> were talking about the children's hospital. Now that is good to know. That it is a bit more <laughs> expensive good to for know water. That is coffee. good to know. <laughs> yeah. Hold yeah. on, yeah. Joe. Yeah. Why are they asking us to pay for for water? <laughs> <laughs> we went into <laughs> a place. I said, we said two sandwiches tea for two. Now and my daughter came in. She's on maternity leave, <laughs> and my daughter came in and I just took me another cup for her. Now we'd only order tea for two, and he said, "Well, I can give you another cup, but I'll charge extra money." And I said, "Charge extra money for a water." <laughs> Can I get some money for a water? Well, thank you, but you, if you could please relate how this relates to the, the far right protests. I just well, I just think the water protests. What about that? Yeah, right. Well, that people power. Moving. Anyway, on. what was I talking about? Oh I, yeah, I use and abuse that machine. I sat outside the place then, and I was looking to. I stole a moment for myself. You know what I mean? Look at I my do. phone. I might. Mm-hmm. I might Mind potentially the write back to an email or something like that. And there was three little tables outside, and this man came out with his pan of chocolat. And sat opposite me at my table, and was weird about it. Was he looking at you when he was? No, eating? he he put his he didn't use the table. He put his pan au chocolat on on the neighbouring seat to cut it. Which I was like, don't need to cut. He's cutting his pan au chocolat. He seems to be putting butter in it. I don't oh, know. He set up a little tripod. There's plenty of butter All in right, there. All right, guys. So here's there. the apple green pan au chocolat. I tried them. I, I, this, this was an apple green. No, this was. I'm confusing you now. This was actually a hot guy's coffee on Pier Street. The oh, are they called, what are they called down there? Cloud picker is a cloud picker. Cloud picker. Okay, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, oh, oh you mean three FE? No, no, not three FE. Well, you see these new fucking. They're all getting. I just been watching a lot of pastry, Watch and I like. Watch I like mouth. baking. I like baking. Okay, famously. So I'm, I'm Thank famously, you for the cookie. I like Sorry, we didn't let Welcome to baking week. And I find that spot. there's too many layers in the things now. There's too. They're getting obsessed with the the layering, the laminating. They call it. But it's getting to a level now where you almost need a steak knife to cut through those things. Yeah. Because mm. There's so many layers. Yeah. So it's. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's right. Is this yeah. a, that, the voice you're making makes it feel like what I'm saying is incredibly boring? No, no it's, it's not. not. It's, it's interesting to see you so passionate I do, about it. I do because I love baking, and I'm the kind. Of, I, I'll do the master thing baker. where I am. Um, I'm a master baker, and uh, and I I kind of rip the thing blind. to like look at the layers. And stuff, and I, I'm telling you, I'm a voracious master baker, and I find that the layering is too much. There's too much layers. All right, so you hearing that? You hearing that? There's too many layers and there's too many folding and it looks simple when people do it. You know, like Bake Off, it all looks very, which is back by the way. Um, but it looks all very simple. I remember one morning I got up and I'm like, I'm actually going to make breakfast, Terry. And she's like, what are you making? And I'm like, do you know what? I'm going to make croissants. And she looked like she was going to cry with like pure sadness because she's like, you just like, she's like, this is just an example <laughs> Just your grandiose plans. Like, you, we have 40 minutes mm. to get these kids fed. And, and I'm like, you have never baked before. You don't, like, you are going to, uh, you cannot, you, you fuck, fuck up the kitchen by trying to I'm put gonna the have to clean it up. coffee into the, like, the little <laughs> thing to make a coffee, you know? Yeah. And, you know, I sometimes now I just kind of use it as a bit of a, as a bit of a joke. Do you, you I, do, who, do, do you have the rule where whoever cooks the food, the other person well, doesn't have to clean? I'm famously the cook. She cooks the food, but I'm the cook because she sleeps around. Oh yes, uh, you're the cook. Yeah, yeah. You're the cook. Yeah, yes. famously, yes. <laughs> in front of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In front of you. Sleeps other men in front of you. Yeah, there ain't no sleeping. <laughs> when we're uh, saying she sleeps. You have to drive them home. Yeah, I have to drive them home. <laughs> 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 I'd be like, do you, do you, do you own the place or? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely, lovely area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where will I drop you off? Drop it to the loose. Uh, drop it to the loose or to my door would be great. Yeah, sure. Couldn't help but notice your your arse look very muscular. Are you eating squats or? What is that? You. Carrick Mines uh, <laughs> driving. <laughs> I'm going to drop you to the old Carrick Mines car, car park. Um, so, like, what's you like? What's going on? Like, you know, you seem like a kind of a yeah. What do you do with your arms? You know, you seem like a kind of buff. Just on his phone, buff guy looking up. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trying to befriend my wife's lover, <laughs> not to Shane, and he cooks out there. Yeah, um, but there's, there is too many cooks. There's too many. Hey, yeah. spoil them. Spoil them. Spoil them. Spoiled my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> too many cooks spoil the marriage, and that's that's something that we're talking about this week that's on the podcast. We're talking Somehow. about today. We're talking about it live. There. Sorry, I'm feeling very woozy because I, I gave, you know, I had to we get d- blood, we, I had to get oh. bloods taken, blood drawn. Oh. He said, Tony said. Can we make it half ten? I have to give blood, and I was like, "Oh, yeah." He came in. I was oh, like, "Oh, right, okay, blood. fair play to him." And um, Tony's giving blood, and there's always uh, the blood transfusion Absolutely. servers are always looking for more donors. Unless you're a filthy, disgusting gay, in that case, you can fuck off. Mm. Don't give us your tainted, filthy blood. You might give us all AIDS. Grow up. Let me give the blood. I'd love to. Anyway, they don't yeah. give you the Guinness anymore. They don't give you Guinness, but anyway, you didn't get blood drawn. Just to say what that means, it, you're, there's a blood ban for years since the 80s on people who, either if you, various things of, of to do with hepatitis, but also the gays are just too disgusting. And another and, approach and, to it people, think, people who were born in England, like myself. They didn't take yes, English blood. at a certain time my, because my of the... Filthy English blood. Yeah, because they don't the, want my filthy wow. protestant blood. Is that to do blood. with the cows? Is it to do my with cow, cow disease? disease. <laughs> yeah, really? and the BCJ. Yeah, I'm off cow. And all the rest of it. Uh, it There's a, a scandal you'd missed. That was when Ireland was uh, Ireland. The mad cow disease. What did they do with they burn oh, the cows? Fantastic. What was going on? What was mad oh, was cow it, I don't know. It was a great when I was a child. That's all the they cows. talked yeah. about. You what? sat down in the news and they were like, blah blah blah, <laughs> Belfast, blah, and then and anyway, back to it. It's the cows yeah. are mad, and I we'd all just picture cows going. Like, and we'd all as a laugh kid, about they'd be like, "It's mad cow disease," and you just accept it. You ever think mad cow disease? Mad. Yeah, the cows mad are cow. mad. What's mad going on cow. there? Yeah, and I think my dad was like, "Yeah, they just have to burn the cows." Oh my god! Like, well, they did so as well insane. when foot and mouth. That was a big deal. That was. Remember going into school? You had to be, wipe your you feet. You had on to the wipe your feet. Brushes. That's when hand san entered the discourse. Yes. hand san was that was. I mean, during the COVID, it was a shortage, and then hand san this that the other. There was no hand san, and then the foot and mouth came. What was it? Two thousand two, two thousand three, oh something God, like excited. that. What was foot and mouth? Foot and mouth is a disease for. For animals on farms, they have trotters. I think it is like that have hoofs and trotters. And so wh- pigs why were and we sheep doing and cows. What was because going on? there was an outbreak, and it's desperate when it happens because it spreads very quickly. Your and mouth and your feet and their feet and their mouth. And what and happens to us? I don't know what happens to us, but uh, we get some form of it. But the animals mm. have to all be killed, and the farmers were all desperate, sad because they had to kill all their animals. Oh yeah, and it was terrible, and there'd be mountains. Well, of let me tell you, I, I spoiled a surprise party there the other day. You could say I had foot in mouth disease. <laughs> And many more. <laughs> uh, anyway. But it was a very exciting time. Take us back to There's your... There's a bit of pizzazz to that foot and mouth there was. and mad cow disease. There was a bit of pizzazz. Like, COVID's a bit boring. Like, it is a bit. There's not... Well, you know, I, I didn't mind you sweeping me feet with a wet brush. 
that was like a fun. You'd Did walk you do that? School. Our school had like you'd walk in like the drive up to the school, and there was a lot of these like upturned sweeping brushes that were doused mm. in some sort of like. Oh no, we just had like mats. We just walked on the blue stuff. Don't remember. Was the teacher strike around the same time? The teacher strike was when we were in. Did you did you start <laughs> school t- two thousand? Around then, I think. I started secondary school in the year two thousand. Killian, what what class were you in in the year? No, 2000? I didn't. I think I was younger. Oh, I don't know. I would have been seven. Right, so you're in like third class or something, or yeah. no, first class, second, second class, like that. Yeah. Well, the teacher strike was I when I was in first year in secondary school, and it was. Fantastic. fantastic! It was fantastic. There were we days just, off. There was DOS class. There was days off. There was new people. So many. Mm. Some days you'd be off Monday, Tuesday, and then you'd be in. We like we're like we call we call. It was like I'm, we're like we're job mm. sharing. It was absolutely fantastic. What's the what's the name of the, the, the union? Sip two. Uh, ASTI. No. ASTI. The ASTI were having no no fuss. I were taking no shit. And AS and uh, STI. No. Oh, I don't think the TUI. Else. If you went to a teachers <laughs> union of Ireland school, uh, God, this is terrible. But. I don't know. Is this, this is good. Shut up. I'm going to graduate. Graduate. That's a word I'm using. I'm graduating into thinking boring stuff is fun. Yes. It was fucking brilliant. We were never in school and we were in first year so it didn't really matter. Like all, we didn't really learn anything then. You How long of, were the strikes on for? The whole year, The Killian. whole year. The premise oh, was, no, no, right? We were in and out, my, in and out. Were secondary, secondary school. The premise was, right, that basically the teachers didn't that. like the fact that they had to, if a teacher was sick, that they had to, one of the things, they were striking about loads of stuff, wages as well, but one of the things was that they had to mind the class if a teacher was sick, so they had to like go into like free classes even though they should be having a break, they should be having a lunch. And some weird government compromise was made where they were just like, all right, well actually if we hire people then to actually sit in those classes. <gasps> oh my God, I forgot that part. The scabs. Oh if my we, God. If we hired people to go in and sit in those classes, would that be fine? They were like, yeah. And they were like, I don't know what you're getting from this. So all these strangers and would they were sit all in. Mental. They, mental. they hired hundreds and thousands of people who, I mean, God forgive me, Tony, I shouldn't be saying these words. What's the nut jobs, freaks, wackos, <laughs> yeah. freaks off the street came in to super, they were called supervisors, and they would supervise lunch. They'd walk around the corridors at lunch. They would sit in on free classes. They, could, they had what no year power. Was this in? It was like the black, it was like black and tans. <laughs> they were the black and tans. They, had, they, they brought were the black. They had no they power. Them back. <laughs> there was, were police in the school. All right, you dogs. Yeah, yeah. But but they, they were, were mental. crazy. Yeah, say they, their names in well, Irish. Say it in English. <laughs> and we had names. Mihal, 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 Mihal. <laughs> We what had did little, you say, Paddy? Yeah. We had little names for them all. Yeah, we called one they like were all, Batman because yeah, he was we, the most boring man in the world. <laughs> and we were like, we have to come for the better. <laughs> Give this guy a bit of personality. Be like, uh, all right, they're here. Oh, fucking, I got Batman later. <laughs> and it was like this kind of like this ball guy well, would sit I don't there. Remember, this is really weird. Both my parents were teachers. Ask them about it. But Just I, because it I doesn't ask matter. Ask your dad. Ask, ask your man. Talk to your dad talk about to your dad. things. But they don't change the conversation. Change the conversation. Killian. Were they just minding me all the time? No, they were just pro- off. You probably in. You were in school. They were. They would have been just, in the canteen, uh-huh. or they would have been in school. But between classes, they would have been in the canteen. Oh, they were on the picket, <gasps> and then we the went on strike. And then we went on strike. We went and on strike. And then we got in trouble for yes. going on strike. We all oh went out. God. Everybody yeah. spilled out into the front, <laughs> and it was like the greatest day. People got on top of the bus stop. It was absolutely like it was like. No, we, you know the way rumours go around school you don't believe them but it was like no four o'clock at lunch no one goes to school no one goes to class no one goes to class no one goes to class we're yeah, like yeah, yeah right whatever and then we all went out in the street and then all the cars of course if you see 600 boys out like going yeah, you're going to think that's so much fun so all the cars were giving us beeps and we were like fuck teachers and all. Yeah, people yeah. had signs like, we were, trees, we were only small so we were just kind of like there bigger boys were doing stuff oh, but like people were throwing things oh running around jocking four people the strike was were fantastic secondary school or first year Second, first might year or secondary third, school uh, might have been second year no third year Maybe. I feel like it wasn't an important year. When did you do your leaving cert? I did my, I don't know. Oh, for God's sake, Tony. I don't know that shit. I don't care. I know when I did my leaving cert. It was 2006. I think I did it. Oh, I'm aging myself now. Oh, I'm giving away my age. Maybe 2004. It's 36. If you, like me, are you didn't affected leave by... Uh, 2005. I don't if you're, know. If you, like me, are a young hot guys listener and are affected by the... I don't know what the fuck these guys <laughs> are talking about. Um, yeah, go on Wikipedia. There is a the, number uh, you can call where you can... It's a Wikipedia mm-hmm. and you can just search that up and read the history of Ireland. Maybe a book. It's probably in a book. Well, yeah, yes, can I say strike. that um, you I, you go on about, I don't know what you're talking about. Duh, duh, duh. Regularly, you two talk about like boy stuff that I don't know about. Or, we like, do not because you, do, you snuff sh- that out. Shut the fuck up, like Tony. A I said shut the fuck up. I expect spider. that to be respected. <laughs> you, no, you talk about like people, you know that guy on Instagram who only eats liver and you're just like, mm, yeah, absolutely. You know that guy who liver sniffs King. perfume. I'm like, liver mm-hmm, yeah. You know the guy, I don't know all those things. Don't right? fragrance. I don't know liver the King. fragrance guy. I don't know those things. And That's I fair. just let you talk about it. Whereas you, you make it about yourself. Mm. That's your problem. 
You make it. You make it about yourself. Yeah, Excuse what, me. I am also me. Who? What is it about? When you guys are talking about culture and like books and all, or Irish history, or politics, or cleanliness, or cleanliness or, around, uh, I, I very or politely soap, sit or here and salt your teeth. and look at the camera like I'm fucking Tim from the office. Did you brush your teeth today? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to work together, create a rumour that Tony always has been dirty. <laughs> <laughs> His teeth are... So I have a friend, Sean, who, like, he just loves doing a little lie. He loves it, and he's really good at it. And he told me he, he had, like, really good Hi, teeth. Hi, Sean, if you're listening. And he never brushed his teeth. And he was like, never brushed them. Never once. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, That's they're just weird. self-clean. After a while, they just self-clean. I was like, oh my God, is that true? He's like, yeah. I brush my teeth all the fucking time, and they're in bits. They're falling mm. out. I've got bloody... I've never had a, a filling, left. so... I always thought that I had better genetics than everyone because I never had a filling. Yeah. So. Then you still in it own? Um oh, I people, still never had a feeling. I didn't get a feeling. I don't I was have 13. feelings. I've got a real fucking I, ha- I used to be one of them. I used to be one of them. They they have a real, I've never tin, had a feeling. Chewing tin foil. It's like they think they're, they're they they think they're better. They think they have it's jeans. But it's have jeans. you been to the Is dentist jeans? though as well because I didn't have one and or then you I went to the Augustus dentist gloop fucking sucking down fucking chocolate all the time. No, it's not that. I do do that, but that says the guy it's very hard for me to argue here with a bag of cookies coming in here. You're always bringing in chocolate. You got Chocolate in your shoes. <laughs> oh yes, mine Ritter Sporter. <laughs> <laughs> mine half is... eaten a written Sporter. No, I, I am well behaved with my teeth. I'm mm. well behaved with my teeth. Right. But I feel like us, you know, us filling riddled people, and now they're bloody, <clears throat> you know, it's costing me so much money. And and I feel like it's like my I'm getting victim blamed. Well, for like drinking Coca Cola all the time, which I'm not because I'm boycotting them. I was drinking two liter bottles of Coke. I was eating kilo bags of Haribo, and mm. I never had a feeling. What does that say about me? Means I'm an incredible person, good, but good person, best genetics going. <laughs> oh God, imagine I was. I like, like a that politician. though. That's what. Yeah, I would. would, it would be like. I just. I wouldn't be Trump, but I could see myself just being like the ego would probably go to my head, where I'd be like, never had a filling. I'm eating Haribo. Yeah. You know, if you're weak, it's delicious. If you're weak, Simon Harris is weak. He has a filling. You know, <laughs> I think I'd leave him that kind of way. <laughs> I'm um, just one hair away. This guy who had braces as a little boy. You want him to lead the country? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't oh, have braces. I wish I had braces. I had a retainer. That was it. Just because I had an, an underbite like this. Are you a lawyer? Oh, you little freak. Yeah. There was, was a little kid in my, I was in junior infants. Me, my cousin was in my class and we were scared. This other boy from one of the other junior infants classes. And because we thought he was like a baddie and a villain. Mm. And the only reason was because he had an underbite. <laughs> and we just thought like he's definitely out cartoons. to get us like yeah because cartoons yeah. would teach you that kind of thing we were like he is out to get us like let's get away from him come on quick in here <laughs> oh my god little, yeah. innocent little boy <laughs> mm. it's scary sometimes it's cute looks like a bit of a puppy but you know I no, look it's cute all the time he looks I remember, menacing uh, mm. the kids just did, I remember we were in mass one time talking to some other kid in mass like you know when you're, when you're a kid you're messing around and stuff like that mm-hmm. in mass, and we met oh this god. new kid and, uh, and he went he looked. He pointed at someone in the choir. And he was like, "That man in the choir. He he kind of scares me." And then we were like, uh, "That's our dad." Ah. <laughs> we were like, "He's like he's scared." And then and then another friend of ours was next to us, Jamie, and he was like, "He's like, well, it's probably just because he's German." And then we were like, "Yeah, he's German." He's like, "Oh yeah, it's probably just that. It's probably just that." We were, just like, we were like, "Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Just a way to kind of make everything." What a okay. two for two there. Yeah. Like, ah, oh god damn. <laughs> Kids can be so cruel. It scares me. But kids get scared or they just stare at people and they get a certain... Like the underbite kid, you know, I was that. I was scaring people walking around like... Looking like Peter Andre. I remember finding out because they did silhouettes of our faces as kids oh, in secondary yeah. school. And I remember walking up, we were all finding our one. And then I looked at mine and it just had this big fucking jaw thing hanging out. And I was like, sorry, what the, f- what the fuck is going on? Like, I'm like, you know, seven years old finding this out and going, Ex- excuse me? You're ugly. I'm ugly. I'm an ugly person. And people walking by going, Killian, that's definitely you. I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. You have such good cheekbones. You have such a good chin. <laughs> well, I mean, because I had to get them pushed back, you know. Did you? Well, I mean, the, the retainer, retainer that's what it kind of helps you do. Oh, wow. Well. Like that. Do you think when you're like in your 60s and you've like put on a few pounds that you'll get like cheek and chin implants to try and retain your previously quite, you know, uh, sharp features? I would. You mean, you want me to emphasize my underbite? Well, I think when you eventually have a big round head. Oh yeah, what's going to happen? The natural people, way. People, Everyone keep, gets a big round head. People oh, really? keep you get doing, hairs in your ears and a big round head. Yeah. <laughs> people keep doing more and more to their faces and bodies. What? Where is it? How far is it going to go? I mean, you know, Simon people Cowell. Have peck implants. Mm. I saw a guy the other day with the peck implants, and I was like, oh my god. And he had like this low cut scoop neck that kind of like was almost booby. I was like, like I was like, what's going on there? Do you know? One time I lost mm. my glasses, and I was on my way into work 
and I couldn't really see where I was going. I had this under repair and work for whatever reason. And I couldn't really see. So I held my phone in front of my face and walked looking through my phone because I could see that in focus. Right. Oh, my God. Very, and, it, it, very interesting. And then I that was kind of thinking to myself, so funny. do you know what? If I had this on like TikTok or like Snapchat and I had like a beauty filter, my reality would be that everyone looks stunning. Mm. And how far away are we that from where the phone is here to where the phone is here? You know what I mean? Tony's pointing at his glasses. Tony's yeah. pointing at his eyes. Can't, don't eyes. they have camera glasses now? Ray-Bans with cameras? Don't they no, have that now? No, they take pictures and stuff. There's kind of AR or whatever. But it might be... My, see, I think that what might happen is people are doing all this kind of like very uh, like actual tactile fucking getting pecs and stuff like that when probably we're like five years away from if we want... Digitally... Digitally, digitally altering what we see. Yeah. You know? And then we're like, oh, you fuck. You make yourself look like ridiculous. Yeah, or like Wolverine. Wolverine. In costume. Yeah. Whatever. You know what I mean? Walk around avatars. Probably not because I don't think that VR thing is caught on and I think people are not really into it. I think that's still, that's a bit of a fad. But I'm just saying that I reckon that it'll be less the actual cosmetics and more the kind of digital. And you got the blood drawn. And I got the blood drawn. (laughs) And I said to her, she was like, are you going to be, we're going to test it for this, 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 and this. And I'm like, oh, the works. And then I was like, oh, oh, but like, oh, you're, and you're not going to take a vile for, for, for all of them, are you? And she goes, no, no. And I was like, what? And then she like took out like, like, I think I said nine to you earlier. I think it was about seven. Seven vials. Seven vials. Mm. Seven vials. I'm wasting away. It we is funny when they're it. taking the blood out and you're, and like, like she's scratch, filling them up she and you're like, you know, you can see a few of them. Some people are very squeamish about these things. I didn't so, look. Ah, okay. but it's grand. Like, I didn't look. Trigger warning blood. It's a visual thing. Trigger you, warning you know, blood for the next 30 like, seconds. It's coming out and you're like, oh, I ain't got much left. And she's like, you're pulling it out. You start feeling faint and everything. She's like, I, I don't got much left in me. I'm like a raisin. <laughs> She's like taking it out of you, drawing it out of you, and then filling up one, and uh, then puts no. that away, and fills up another, and puts it away. I I'm, d- I'm, I'm parched. <laughs> I'm parched. I it was, is. I, I mean, I tried to sign up for a uh, for a medical study uh, when I was broke and unemployed in London, and I rate uh, podcast fodder. And it was like four grand, and they inject you with the flu, and you stay in a facility for a month with the flu. With oh the my flu, God. and they like we might reinject you with the flu, and then try different medications and stuff on you. So to get in, I had, they had to do like a medical on me, or whatever, and they had to like take my blood. And while the woman was taking my blood, it was so again trigger warning blood. It was so slowly coming out of me and into like the bag or whatever. Mm. And she goes, she goes, uh, she, you very, you very thick blood. <laughs> and I was like, is that normal? Thank and she you, goes, no, madame. No, not not really. <laughs> it's very highly viscous. <laughs> and then she. And then she was telling me about what I actually I need to do. I knew you were at viscous. I knew I'm a viscous. Yeah, I'm a viscous. I knew God. that. You can I know. Tell it's like you. Ribena. But then she was trying to actually tell me what to do about it. And then I kind of drifted off because I was thinking about what it'd be like if Dracula was eaten in 99 and had the viscous blood on it. <laughs> anyway, this is too bloody. I'm sorry to those blood squeamish people. You know. We need to move on from it now. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, but that's. Yeah. I'm trying to look after Why the would listeners? Dracula be on the beach? He'd die. When I was on holidays in a group holiday, we went to a holidays and then this guy um, called Nile. Nile kept doing thing where he would go out and then swim at night. Oh. And he would go to this beach. And, on like, his own? No, like with the group, whatever. He'd always yeah. get in the water or get in the nude or whatever. Mm. And then... My friend Jeff Buckley, he used to go out and have a swim at night. <laughs> ah, Tony. No, I'm just saying. Tony, don't <laughs> joke about Jeff. But anyway, then the next day, one of the days, Nile was in the daytime, he was talking about, he's like, oh no, we went to this club and this place. And I was like... Then we went down to, you know, the night beach. And then he caught himself. He's like, the night beach. It's not a night beach. It's just because I go there at night. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he had crafted this thing in his head of like, well, that's the beach. You, that, the night beach. That's where the night where beach. one goes at night. It was like absolutely hilarious. I, 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 ho- I hooped and hollered. Then I realized the night beach and the day beach were one and the same. They're one and the same. <laughs> it was my perception of things. <laughs> I wonder if R.E.M. has sent a lot of people off to their death with night swimming. Because it sounds so magical. Night swimming deserves a quiet night. You just think that sounds so romantic. Mm. I'm going to go out and swim in the night. The recklessness of the water. The recklessness. Mm. You cannot see me naked. These things, they go away. We love it. I, I love that song. Yeah, yeah I love, love, I love it. Song. One time I was in that cafe uh, that's in town. It's actually in the oldest stone building in Ireland or concrete or whatever. It's Let's a, see if we can get this. It's a, off Parnell Street near the cinema down there. The oldest uh, stone the name building. Of, it's a, yeah, is it uh, the wall, the pale? No, 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 no. It's none of those things. Uh, it's well, the oldest uh, what's stone older than or the concrete. Pale wall? Anyway, it's called the, <laughs> uh, I forget what, Bloss. What is Bloss older Cafe. than the pale wall? Hmm. <laughs> the pale wall is you, not a building, so you're watch your mouth. You're wrong, me thinks. 
<laughs> what did you say earlier on? You don't know anything about history or anything, so shut up. It's true. Anyway, and I was in there <laughs> having a coffee. Pure no playground deal. energy right there. <laughs> no big deal. Uh, yeah. Michael Stipe was in there. Just chatting. What? Who's you? Michael Stipe? From, from R.E.M. R-E-M. Who's the, the singer, the, the band who sings Night Swimming. The bald one? Yes. 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 Yeah. That's bald men are not to be the defined corner. by their baldness. Yeah, but... Um, that's who he is. Bald yeah, he was in mm. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Imagine yeah. having to pick him and Moby out of a lineup. You'd be like, Which? And one time I was passing... <laughs> All you white guys look the same to me. Jesse, I'll tell them. you this. I was passing the insom- a terrible part of the city, Jervis Street, Lewis Station. Mm. Stop. Brother. Very busy. I was passing the insomnia there, which, as you know, I don't like insomnias. Block. Um, Whoa. You know who was in there? Jesse Eisenberg. Oh. Yeah. With a baby, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't sneak a picture because he had so a never baby. Never figure out if Jesse Eisenberg is is uh, is an absolute dickhead or he's just doing a bit all the time. You can never tell. His Zuckerberg was so good. Yeah. I mean, not like Mark Zuckerberg at all, but a very good villainous character. Yeah. Um, that it's kind of hard. It's, it's so iconic. He's, and then for him to just go straight into Lex Luthor is yeah. also very, you know what I mean? I didn't know he did that. But that, he, he did. He does. He does. I think he's a great actor. But like he does when he's doing interviews and stuff like that, he's incredibly awkward. But I'm like, is he doing a bit? Mm. He was really? mean to a girl once. But then um, she was being rude to him. Was she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very rude. Look yeah. it up there. Jesse Eisenberg talking Let to a bit rude. Who interview. is without sin cast the first stone. Yeah, well. You've never been rude to a girl. People who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Mm. Pot kettle. People don't even say that's like calling the pot. The, that's, like call, that's like the pot calling the kettle black. They just say pot kettle now. There was a pot kettle. And of course, they're electric now, the kettles, so you wouldn't really, they wouldn't really be getting blackened. We know so done. I wouldn't know, but I don't have one. I want to talk, I about, I want to talk about Ellen DeGeneres. Oh yeah, she's got a stand-up special. So her out stand-up now. special is out, right? So is that any good? I, just, I, I would say so. Anyway, Ellen, famously good comedian, and then became a thing, and then became a talk show host, then became villain. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the Queen of Mean. And they have that the, is not the, true, the opening <laughs> sequence to her, her stand-up special is her as all like a load of cacophonous noise of all the things people said about her on the TV and radio. Wow. She's the queen of bean. She's horrible. Da, da, da. A toxic work of that. And then Ellen takes a big deep breath and goes, <sighs> and I think it's fascinating these things. Like Ellen thinks that everyone still cares. And like, the truth is, it's actually worse than you think, Ellen, because she thinks everyone's like, oh, Ellen, she was a uh, fuck her forever. Actually, we don't give a fuck. Mm. We don't care. And all these famous, famous hosts, you need to learn. We actually don't really care. Yeah. We just enjoy it as a little hobby. It's like, oh, Ellen's, yeah. Ellen's horrible, is it? All right, grand. Yeah. And then we move on. We have other stuff to think about because, you know, there's a new pop star or whatever. Yeah. We don't actually care. You think people still think about you being mean? We don't give a shit, Ellen. That's mm. much sadder mm. for you than than the than you thinking they all called me so mean. That's much, it's much more, well, it's I a worse know. state of affairs, Ellen. We don't care. Yeah. I don't, I no, I think that what you have to do is when you do something big in public, you almost have to follow, it's like episodic. So the last episode of Ellen was that she's mean. So then the, the first new episode of the season of Ellen is clarifying what we saw in the last season. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel, I still feel like Aziz Ansari hasn't done anything as big as that Me Too case against him yeah. since. So I feel like, you know, you know, I still feel like that's the last, that's, that was the finale episode of Aziz Ansari, even though I know that, you know, what there was all that kind of clarified or whatever like that, and people have made their mind up about it or whatever. But uh, I still feel like that you have to kind of almost in the public eye being like, all right, well, that was the last thing. So it's like Chris Rock, you can't then, you can't then move on until you address the Will Smith and he has, and it's not, mm. uh, it doesn't define him as much because he hadn't confronted it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you, ha- you have to, you have to do that's episode why, that's two. That's what Philip Schofield's got right. He's fucking off to a desert island. Mm-hmm. This is a new show where Philip Schofield's going to an island with just cameras on his own and he's filming it all. Yeah, what? but he's not really going to be on his own. Hope he's you, enough vapes. Look, we know we've done a few TV bits here and there. <laughs> TV involves, every bit of TV involves like, can we hold there, guys? Just, sorry, can we just change batteries? Hold on, guys. I'm just going to change memory card. Hold there, folks. Sorry, can we just get that pause? I was waiting for the plane. Sorry, guys. Ready for a bit of cloud cover there. There's no way sure they he ha- used to work as a first AD. So. Mm. There's, there's no way there's enough. Quite a sec, go. <laughs> guys, thank guys, you. Five minutes left. Thank you, guys. Quite on set. Quite on set. Folks, you know we, the are losing the, we are losing the light and We're we need to get this here. shot. Yeah. We, need, we need to get this. Thank you, folks. Thank you for your cooperation. Thank you. Mm. Killian's getting cold. Killian's getting cold. Yeah, yeah. I'm a keep warm. Someone a keep get, warm. get Killian the coffee. <laughs> there's a TV thing that they call a big jacket. It's kind of like... Um, a keep warm. What do they call those uh, when you wear to the sea? Uh, uh, dry yeah. rope it's like dry a big rope. dry rope and they're like do you want to keep warm yeah. and one day I was shooting something and I put on my own coat and she's like do you want to keep warm I was like 
No, because I'm wearing my coat. Mm. <laughs> anyway, keep one. I'm so funny. But yeah, there's no is. way that Philip Schofield's really on that island literally by himself. I've heard they're releasing a young boy on oh the island God, as well. Oh, shut the fuck up. Oh, stop. <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> Killian, I'm surprised at you. <laughs> surprised at you. <laughs> there was, that, was that in... Um, Brass Eye Brass Eye where they, they sent fired a, a paedophile into space yeah and then the worst thing that could happen is they actually also yeah it's like unfortunately a young boy had crept aboard NASA said this is the one thing we didn't want to happen <laughs> terrible terrible stuff no, terrible. Funny. makes you think though doesn't it makes you think makes you think the end of the makes day. you think mm. makes you think that's good though that's him very thematically kind of coming to terms with the thing mm. going to a desert island yeah yeah you know, yeah, but the best. It's somebody, almost like a Sisyphean task of yeah, like pushing the We're not going to see if you watch that show, which I kind of think it's on Channel Five in the UK, so I'm never going to see it. But like, I, you're not going to get a genuine moment from him on that show. And no, I will say, when I would, you, you, I don't, I doubt we've ever seen a genuine moment from Philip Schofield. I bumped into Dwayne Dugan. Oh yeah, yeah. I was at the Dart Station, and I was like, Dwayne. Have you listened? The first thing I said to him I said, "Have you listened to the new Fontaine's album? It's f- uh, unbelievable." Which mm-hmm. it is. It's so good. And then, and then he was like, "No, I'm actually, I'm just, I'm trying to see if I'm, he's, I'm, I mean, I'm going to add him now, but he's in the office, but he's trying to watch the new Vince Vaughn, Vince, Vince Vaughn, mm. Vince Vaughn documentary." And I don't know anything about wrestling or anything like that. But I was Vince like, McMahon. Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon. Who's yes. Vince, oh, he's the other guy. Yeah, Vince yeah. McMahon. And I was like, Vince McMahon. Yeah, what's is that guy? Is there any allegations about that guy? No, I haven't heard a single wow. thing. Haven't heard anything in, wow. within the whole scope. But I was like. So he seems like the kind of guy. Is there any allegations about him? And and Dwayne was like, Did you, so many. And I was like, it's always the one you suspect the most, isn't it? Yeah. It's always you can just think. I was like, Vince, that guy. He seems like he would have a few. Mm. Always the one you suspect I, uh, the most. Did Vince McMahon I would talk about it? Is he the? Is he also the like? He's the man who actually owned that. Like he actually owns yeah. the wrestling, yeah. but he also put himself in it. He grew it to a very small wrestling promotion to a multi-billion national, you know, international thing. He also put himself in it as a baddie. Right. So he, but he, yeah. but he is genuinely the man who signs genuinely the checks the as well. Genuinely, the man signs the checks, does all the work, right. and also put himself. And in is it. Shane O'Mac his own actual son? Shane O'Mac is his actual because son. Because yes. all Shanes listening of a certain age, hello to all the Shanes. Hello, Shane. You know Shanes that we all became. We were Shanes. Maybe mm-hmm. to our mammy, daddy, mm-hmm. granny. We were maybe Shaney at times. Uh, Shaner developed for a while. But then when the Shane McMahon happened, we all became Shane O'Max. Wow. That's what happened to all Shanes oh, really? across. Yes. All oh Shanes of a certain age across the nation. We became Shane O'Max. Wow. Yeah. He was incredible. probably one of the bravest. Uh, he did some of the craziest. Was that his real wrestling. son? Yeah. And he would, he would jump off like the hell in the cell cage, 20 feet in the air onto a table. You're he kidding. would jump off the Titan Tron. The Titan Tron. Just look at this being like the Titan Tron's the big screen that they do. They show all the, the videos sure. of the wrestlers on the sure. way down, okay, okay. which is maybe like 40 feet in the air. And he would like mm. jump onto, onto other wrestlers. And he just look at this boy jumping off while he was a man, jumping off these things, being like, Dad, <laughs> love me do you know what yeah. I mean like dad yeah. please please. is yeah. this high enough Yeah. is this yeah. is this dangerous enough being thrown through a glass window because so I always thought on Shane O'Mac and all the Shane O'Mac's listening Vince today. McMahon always looked like I was like even as a kid I never I couldn't really get on board at wrestling because I was like but it, it does, it's not realistic to me and the acting part not Ooh. the not the not the physical side the acting <laughs> the acting wasn't realistic to me so yeah. don't jump down my throat Chance to be a fine thing. <laughs> Job, Johnny. We're working. Right? Oh my god, that's inappropriate for the workplace. So you guys I always thought it seemed. But I'm looking. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go off and have sex. Can you give me a lift home after this. <laughs> <laughs> but I look at it now, and I'm like, oh, it's not that Vince McMahon was a terrible actor, which he is. Did you just look at your watch? No, I'm checking to see how long we've been talking. Mm-hmm. Talk, talk, I'm middle listening. Of my I'm fascinated. Yeah, but I'm definitely listening. the man is has just hoovered up class grade A cocaine. That's what's happened. Yeah, he no, not a coke guy, but definitely a steroid guy. Definitely no, but, a lot of steroids. Come on, look at the wide eyes. Is, is no, he it okay to do steroids if you're in wrestling? Because it's not. Well, that was another one. That was visual. one of his many scandals. Is that he had a hired doctor who was basically prescribing and selling directly to his talent and then they were forced so steroids are also something that you take when you have an injury that you're trying to overcome that you really shouldn't or if you mm-hmm. already have an existing heart condition you would overlook all these things and just give people steroids wrestlers probably have the shortest lifespan of any career because like most of them are like 40s or 50s they die of heart attacks or they die of all Jesus. these kind of like they're battered and bruised and they can, they can keep going even though they really should quit so 
he was done for that for the steroid use and pushing steroids is he in on jail? his wrestlers. No, he's not. He got acquitted what? of that, and then he had various lawsuits, including a sexual harass, a sexual assault one in the nineties that he was acquitted from, or he but there was uh, out, of, out of court and then he's got a big one now a lawsuit that is why he was removed when they sold to Netflix they sold to Netflix okay sorry they sold to uh, they merged the UFC and the WWE are in one their Endeavor mm. or no Endeavor bought both of them and they're one operation they mm. operated as one and so they did and they had a, a six part deal. Netflix documentary about it was a six part Netflix documentary from the very start of the wrestling That's so funny. Promotion. Were they negotiating with him while they had that fucking documentary in the can? Well, this is the thing. They, they were, were like, like, listen, uh, we would like to get we would like to get your company. By the way, we do have quite a, a strong little uh, thing in our background yeah. here to negotiate the deal. We have proof that you are trafficking people. Um, well, <laughs> I think they were going to do a warts and all kind of documentary and that was part of the Netflix deal. They were going to do a big documentary on him and then you know, he was kind of kicked out of the WWE and now he's, they still made the documentary and included all the recent okay. allegations. So it shows what he's done, but it in no way paints him in a positive light. Okay. You know, cool. This it's feels good. like it's sponsored by Netflix, this podcast. That was an in-depth. Well, um, I yeah. really like it. That's my fucking... That's right. That's your passions. And people will always like to hear someone talk about something they're passionate about. Yes. Even if... <laughs> no, I've no, I've no thing for her. I'm not... <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, look, we're going to banter. Okay, we're going to banter. That is one thing you're going to expect from the young husband. We're going to talk about blood. We're going to talk about drowning at night. And we're going to talk about ba banter. 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 Mm. banter. It's banter, mate. Banter. <laughs> Do you, uh, good banter, good chat. Like, that's what that's what it's all about. Like, mm. good banter. I did yeah. love the, hearing that it was guys in London. They were like, yo, he's good chat. I like he's that term. Good chat. He's good. No, he's good chat. He's yeah. good. He he's, is good chat. He's good chat, actually. I, I really only like learned that, that, that from the Love Island. Or they said that? They Fuck say, me. like, he has got good chat. He's got yeah. good chat. I don't know. They were like, he's him, actually I, good chat. I know sometimes we get up in the morning. And Do you? Early. Yeah. Really? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> She's getting up very early. Do things moment. your own way. But she gets up. She started getting up even earlier before I'll get up. Because she wants a bit of time to herself in the morning. I can see how she's she like, would want she's that. Like, um, yeah. I've been, this she's was her like, day. I've seen yeah. you this week. And to be honest, I want a bit of time by myself <laughs> with Tony. She, she says it's because I'm too chatty. And I'm talking <laughs> too much. And like, and I'm like, oh my god, I am. I, mm. I am be, I'm when I be walking down the street, I just be talking. To, but like, I literally, I'm like, what are you doing today? And how's work? What's going on? Blah blah. blah. She's like, I'm just wait. Can you let me? She can you to allow find, me to wake up in this world? She needs to find a nice quiet Spaniard. Yeah. I think that's a good, <laughs> a good part of a, a good healthy relationship. You should be able to say. Please stop talking to yeah. me. Mm. There, I, I once wanted Raymond to say that to me. I think he just said, stop talking to me. I think straight <laughs> out loud. Like, it, it was the morning as well. I oh. I look mm. What's funny is when it's your partner, you can actually just go, yeah, yeah, fair. And then just walk off into it. It is mad how, like, if you laugh and you both laugh, you can kind of comfortably say, shut the fuck up. Shut. <laughs> but if there's no laugh, it's really bad. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? Just if you, if you actually like the person at that time, yeah. at <laughs> that moment in time. Yeah. You're like, okay. Depends. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's true. Um, but anyway, look, Shane's on his phone now, so that means that we have to leave um, because he's checked out. But look, if you enjoyed you this say. podcast, um, you can listen to more of this podcast. Yeah, in fact, a bonus podcast. In fact, a podcast. Some people are saying the best bonus podcast available out there, and that is over on Headstuff Plus for the price of a pint a month. Mm -hmm. It's actually cheaper than a pint. The way things have gone. Wait, yeah. depending yeah. on where you buy it's the a lot pint. Cheaper than a pint. You buy the pint in certain places, it will be cheaper. Price of a culture pint. Price of a culture pint, but like proper Westy, like not even like mm. you know. rural kind of one. Yeah. Yeah. Where yeah. you'd be drinking the pint, you'd be like, where is he getting this from? The sort of point you might read about in uh, Some Cunt's Guide to the Countryside. A book that is also available. Please buy my book. It's out now. You can get it on, I don't know, Easton's are doing a cheaper online deal or get it from an independent bookstore near you. Uh, I think most of them have them in Ireland and there's ones in uh, Germany. And also, this is really cool. Wow. The Shakespeare and Company bookshop in the middle of Paris uh, that sort of sits in the shadow of Notre Dame has got some kind of guide to the country. You're joking, That's man. great. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, so, the, the, you know, the, the Seine is lapping along and uh, above it, you can see a Parisian person with a baguette and a sort of newspaper of, of Le Spectateur. Uh, uh, Figaro? Le Figaro under his arm. Well, that's a bit right wing. But Le yeah, Monde? Why not? No, Le Monde. Le that, Monde. That, Where? That's more. And then he's opening up some good guide Charlie to Abdul. the countryside. And he's like, what is this shit? And yes. then he tosses it into sand and then it floats along. But then a little rat that's just escaped the country uh -huh. has jumps onto the 
uh, book and then floats down and then ends up getting into a whole load of escalates I won't get into but that's why you should buy Ratatouille on DVD <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's available on, uh, that is available on Blu-ray as well we should say as well Loud. And a little bit sad. He was the best guy around. Oh my, oh my, is it hot in here or what? You're an attractive guy. It's the fabulous Tony Cantwell. I'm talking about Shane Daniel Burns.